The Escapist has seen mass resignations following the firing of editor, uh, editor-in-chief editor Nick Calandra, hopefully I said that right, among others. Resignees include most of the Escapist video team, including game reviewer Ben Yatsi Croshaw, the primary creator behind Zero Punctuation, which is a series that, at least on and off, I believe we've both been watching yep. for an extremely long time. Yeah, like um, over 10 years. Oh, it launched in 2008. Yeah, launched in yeah. 2008. I've been probably watching it since around then. That's so, wild. Yeah. Uh, Yahtzee's contributions were by far the most popular content on the site, uh, to the point that many commenters have speculated that the escapists may not survive this loss. I don't see how they could. Honestly, when I heard that Yahtzee was gone, I assumed escapist was just literally done automatically i haven't seen any of their other content perform particularly well then again i only pay attention to the video side of things like i don't really um every once in a while an escapist article will end up in my google news feed or whatever else but i don't i didn't know that the escapist had written articles for like many years i don't end up there as a destination um the only thing i ever really cared about from them was zero punctuation so Good luck with that. Yeah. Yatsi. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at their video library and zero punctuation. Zero punctuation spikes up. Outperforms everything else by everything like up. an order of magnitude, basically, yeah. to the point where if I was them and if I was advising them on their video strategy, I would just stop publishing a lot of this other stuff. I wouldn't even bother. Well, they should have done that a long time ago, probably. But anyways, um, Yahtzee, Kalandra, and other members of the former video team have started a new channel called Second Wind, which already has over 130,000 subscribers. They will be hosting short form reviews under the title Fully Ramblematic. Oh, that's his old, uh, that's like his old name for something. Oh, I didn't actually know that. Yeah, I think he had like a blog or something called Fully that Ramblematic. Makes sense because they are saying that apparently zero punctuation branding still is owned and uh, belongs to the escapist, which makes sense. So using something that he used to have would line up. Uh, the current owners of the escapist gamers group, G A M U R S, um, acquired the site alongside several other popular online gaming outlets last year. They received negative media, uh, attention earlier this year when they fired around 40% of their staff, then attempted to replace said staff, the writing team with a single AI copy editor handling 250 articles a week. Uh, which I believe we even talked about on this show um, and went very poorly. According to Calandra, he was fired by gamers for not achieving goals that demonstrated a poor, that uh, I, I, I think this is trying to say that, that he believes uh, demonstrated a poor understanding of the escapist audience. Sheesh. Um, yeah. Try to imagine... If we lost like our our top performing host and most of our other staff, what would be left here as a as a as a media organization? Like imagining for us, I, I just I don't know how to wrap my brain around organizations like a gamers group here. That I hate the name, by the way. Buy so you well, yeah. gamers group, and they just spelt it G A M U R S, like. Well, no, okay. I stop. mean, yeah, they've done a lot more than just the name to make us think that they're idiots, but <laughs> fair enough. Can somebody please explain this to me? Like, I, I understand the strategy in some cases. Okay. Like I, uh, one, one of my friends is a vet, um, who runs a practice. Um, she's great. And she was talking to me about how there is either one or two, like veterinary um, conglomerates, like animal hospital groups that are going around buying up all of the independent veterinarian clinics. And the reason that they're doing it is because they're playing an extremely long game here where the goal is complete consolidation um, so that they can control pricing across all animal hospitals in a given region. and. And, 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 it, and it makes sense that they would pay sometimes double what a you know, business valuation advisor might come in and tell you your practice is worth because they're playing a long game here. So if, if they don't get a, a complete return on that investment for 10 years rather than you know, five, which might be a more normal target, then they're comfortable with that because 
They've got plenty of cash coming in from everything that they've acquired already over the years. They've got investment and there's a clear path to not just profitability, but market control. What could possibly make you think that that playbook would work with game review websites? So yeah, the, 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 these, these these veterinary acquisition people, like they, they, yeah, they'll go in and they'll like lay off staff and they'll 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 cut equipment budgets or you know whatever else. Like the quality of care might fall, um, but at the end of the day, these are physical locations. What what are what are yeah. people going to do? Just click a few buttons on their keyboard and navigate to a different competitor no, it's not always that simple there is a value to the branding there's a value to the location especially when like i i don't think like if you i don't know i can't speak for them but if you want more zero punctuation it's not like yahtzee's gone as far as i can tell the ste the the team's effectively staying together and going hey you want more of that stuff we're gonna make it we're just gonna have a different name so like so what, i don't know what can you possibly be thinking Acquiring something like this, thinking, oh yeah, you know what would be a good idea? Taking this thing that we bought that is obviously working to a degree that we thought it was a good idea to buy it, completely breaking it so that it is not functional at all, and then profit? I don't understand it. Can, can somebody help me? understand what the thought process could possibly be here yeah i don't know and like if it was a bet on ai i feel like they should have uh you know vetted that a little bit more first if it's a bet on ai then just have your ai crap out 300 gaming review websites and start publishing garbage ai articles yeah. and try and gain some momentum that way honestly though like that's not even me no, that, that I mean that's a strategy people have literally done already. So like it's not it's not, it's not and it get, makes sense. Get good at that and <clears throat> then you know buy a recognized name or something like that. Don't just don't just walk in. We're already seeing that with um we've talked about this on on Wan Show before, but the the whole Reddit search term thing, searching on Google but appending Reddit to the end of it mm -hmm. because you're hoping to get Reddit results instead of these like trash random uh like SEO optimized suggestion sites and then those seo optimized suggestion people are just making reddit posts and trying to get those reddit posts to the top of those searches as well which is rough um so like that that type of stuff is already happening with all of that said <sighs> with all of that said i it is pretty clear to me that if the escapist employed more than like two or three people um, they were probably in serious trouble in terms of the sustainability of that business. So, you know, if the current ownership thought that, you know, a change in leadership was needed in order to make the business more sustainable, then, um, you know, I guess they made the move that they thought was best, but what they perhaps didn't anticipate was the level of loyalty that, the staff would have to the former editor in chief. And when I say sustainable, um, I'll run you guys through some, some basic numbers here. So here you can pull up these stats for any YouTube channel on this great site called social blade. Uh, it used to be better. They used, used to be a lot better. Yeah. They used to log more than just two years of monthly viewership. And, and then YouTube was like, no, the subscriber counts used to be super granular. And then YouTube threatened to cut off their API access if they didn't comply. And so now the site's not as good. So, um, I don't know, go f yourself YouTube, but whatever. <laughs> the point is that, um, in the last four months, you know what, let's say the last quarter in the last three months, they <laughs> averaged six and a half million views a month. So what, what does that work out to? Let's pull out ye old calculatrice here. What just happened to my cal? Oh, there it is. Man, just, it was hiding. It was camouflaged. Look at that. It was like, whoa, you'll never see me here, Linus. Okay, so let's <laughs> let's pull out the old calculatrix. We'll replace the least important thing on my screen with it. Um, that works out to probably about, about, it's, I would say a rough guideline is about $1,000 for every half a million views. So if we were to say 6.5 million divided by 0.5 
equals times $1,000. Now, uh, hold on, that was times 10,000. One moment, please. Uh, oh my gosh, how do I even undo? You know what, the point is $13,000, okay? One, two, three. There we go. We got thirteen thousand dollars, which sounds like a lot of money in a month. Pay taxes I'm sure, on that first. I'm sure lots of people would. Well, no, 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 not necessarily. We'll get to that. Mm. I'm sure lots of people would love to make thirteen thousand dollars a month. The problem is that see. that's thirteen thousand dollars a month at all. Yeah, that's um, pretty rough when For you consider everyone. that. Yeah, you might have maybe more than one person to pay now the parent company is going to want to make money there now obviously uh you're going to have you know equipment and business operating expenses and all that kind of stuff i will also point out that yeah. they they have their own website they do I, I was getting to that and they have a patreon yes so uh wh wh what's the patreon at how's it well okay it's going to be hard to oh no the we patreon can use patreon is, stats is slightly obfuscated oh is it uh, <laughs> because it doesn't tell you how many people per tier and they have a ton of tiers. They have a lot of tiers. They have God <laughs> tier. They have a lot of tiers right now. Male. <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, God tier, mailbag, community's choice, credit, sponsor free and bonus content, early access, and tip jar. Those are all different tiers they have on Patreon. Okay. Paid members. Actually, not bad. They have a decent um, amount of paid members. Right now, they're sitting at 1,949. Okay. If you had to make a wild guess uh, based on having absolutely nothing to do with this industry at all, uh, what would you say is probably a pretty typical monthly contribution? Uh, well, okay. The The problem with that... So, they're, they're, it says their most popular tier is their $3 tier. Okay, so let's be optimistic um, and let's say five dollars. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's more than that. They do have a tier that's lower than that, but the thing that you the, the stuff that you get on that tier is not that crazy. So okay, so I let's, suspect it's gonna be close to four. Let's five say months. they're making another ten grand a month. Okay, <coughs> I don't know if they do in video sponsorships, but I'm gonna say maybe they do. I've never seen one on a zero punctuation video, but who knows? I'm gonna say they do in video sponsorships, and I'm gonna take a totally ignorant stab at this, and I'm gonna say. Uh, they can probably double their AdSense with that. So we're up to a p the point where, oh, okay, hold on. We're looking at some pretty respectable revenue. Let's say they can do, let's say they can triple their Patreon number. Crazy. Their, it helps to have external funding, uh, other creators, with, if you want to join Flowplane, by yeah, the way. with their ads on their website. Okay, so let's put these two together. And let's say they can do about $55,000 a month in, uh, in revenue. Uh, or, yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's say they can do $55,000 a month in revenue. Again, that sounds like a lot, especially when we multiply it by 12 and we look for the year. You know, wow, that's like well over half a million dollars. That's, that's a freaking ton of money. You could actually pay a team of people out of that. The problem is that as far as I can tell, the Escapist team was a lot more than, you know, five or six people. Um, yeah, and like that Patreon isn't just the video team, right? They, they release a lot of articles. <coughs> Looking at their website, like literally just for November 10th, which is uh, today? Yesterday? Something. Today. November 10th. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different articles released today. Um, and I, I, we did mention like, yeah, they have this external website. Um, this is an area where I have very little experience and has always confused me. So I'm just putting that out there first. Sure. But basically none of these have any comments, which is weird. Can I go to your screen? Yep. So this is the Escapist Magazine's website. Uh, first one, this uh, A24, Darren, whatever, Elon Musk biopic, zero comments. Maybe Expanse, pick one from comments. before the... Uh before There's, the whole thing. Stardew Valley has two comments. Because um, this is like all from the last two days still. How do I even view more on just the articles? I don't know. Um, news? <laughs> there was view more for podcasts. There we go. Wow. Um, yeah, they published Why would it go articles. one, two, three, one thousand? That seems like quite the jump. I mean, these are all zeros. Oh, here's a few comments. Yeah, there's some comments on some of these. 
I mean, I mean, one to three is like I think my point is still standing. Oh yeah, like, your point's very I, valid. I don't know how much traction there is on these articles. Um, maybe there's a bit, but I I do know that yes, they have quite a few of them. Um, but web page ads don't bring in a ton of money. So here's the problem. Um, I obviously don't see the point of buying something and then proceeding to trash it. Um, however, mean, X is a great name. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> it is also possible that the escapist was simply a completely unsustainable machine the way that it was running and was only managing to pay salaries based on, you know, VC money or something like that, which was ultimately why the previous ownership seeked an exit. Even if that's the case, it might yeah. make it, it, it might just mean that this move uh, makes even more sense for the video team because they were clearly able to release some bangers for a lot of years. Like zero punctuation hasn't just been like successful. It's it's been uh prolific the problem is that it doesn't have the same momentum that it used to and i don't i i couldn't really answer that's, I why mean, that's fair enough but it still does like video gaming content in general i would actually argue doesn't have the momentum that it used to um like oh i would like to hear this argument more i i think in years past i i'd wager honestly probably around like 2013 14 maybe mm-hmm Gaming content on YouTube was actually really big. And I don't just mean Let's Plays and stuff. Are you? Is it possible you I was more into have it. aged it is, out of it? It is possible. Uh, but I, I think so. Because like Game Ranks is the biggest one that I know of right now. Um, and, and, and to be very clear, I think Game Ranks is fantastic. Um, but for like the biggest of a segment, and maybe I'm just wrong, and maybe we should just like social blade the category and see if I'm wrong. Um... But yeah, game ranks going through their average views of the last little bit. They do have some stuff that hits really well. Like they did 10, 10 game features that are evolving backwards. That did 780,000 views. Really nice. So when you say gaming content, you specifically don't mean Let's I Plays mean Let's or plays. Twitch streamers who are yes. reacting to stuff no. or whatever. Okay, I see. News, uh, like, like my favorite thing that game ranks does is called Before You Buy. Got it. So it's like a relatively early on review. So you're talking like video journalism. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yeah. Video game journalism was like pretty pop in a while ago. Right. Um, well, I mean, you know what happened, right? <coughs> There's no money. Yeah. How are you supposed yeah. to? It's not, it's yeah, not spon sustainable. Sponsors for some reason aren't a huge fan of gaming content. Well, I can think of a lot of reasons why that would be. The the purchase <laughs> intent is relatively make that noise right now. <laughs> the, the purchase intent is relatively low. Yeah. The audience skews relatively young. They're also extremely volatile. Yep. Um it's it's a really um don't take this the wrong way, gamers. It's a pretty toxic culture. Oh, absolutely. Overall. Like yeah. I think if we're honest with ourselves, the 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 uh, the brand association with, uh, you know, a lot of video gaming content and a lot of video gaming communities is not necessarily the going to be uh, super attractive to your big brands, you know, your safe brands. Um, <laughs> oh no, are people hating me now? No, Suba and Philip playing chat is just like, we know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Breaking news, Linus says games are a fickle market. Yeah, okay, right, okay. And I, I, I'd say that it's fair to say that there's very low loyalty. Um, oh yeah. And so it's, it's really tough. Oh, also, this is another really challenging thing is in order to break out in gaming, you have to I, I don't even know i could if someone said look i want to break out in gaming content um how do i do it you know as as someone who has experience building a a, 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 a a i would say pretty successful youtube business online video business the first thing i would tell you is i have no idea i i wouldn't even know where to begin to break out in in youtube um 
in, in gaming on YouTube. So there's, there's, there's a few channels, um, like Ahoy. I don't actually know how to pronounce it. Ahoy, Ahoy. I don't know. A H O Y. Um, and, and there's, I think there's one called Arch as well. Uh, and there's a, there's a few others that have like a, a kind of particular, like, history interesting documentary kind of take on on gaming content that i i find like super super interesting um and they do really well and like this this ahoy that i just mentioned their biggest problem is their their content release schedule is like actually insane like if you look at their last eight videos um the last one was three years ago (laughs) but they are continually releasing content Wow. Okay. Like, uh, I don't know. Like they've never stopped in that three years. Um, they've actually been releasing content. If I, if I keep scrolling yeah, nine years, 10 years. Yeah. They, 11 years, they keep going back, but they have, they have all this really interesting stuff. Like the, what made me search them up was, uh, this video It's just called big boxes. It has 760,000 views. It's like a mini doc on boxes in games. You know how like gaming boxes used to be huge and they got smaller and there was different like formats and it's like actually surprisingly very interesting. Wow. Okay. It's like why like, like EA brought like some standardization to boxes and like all the, I don't know. I watched it a while ago, uh, maybe up to three years ago. Yeah, I remember when the battle chest was like in the shape of a chest. Yeah. Yeah. Like he cool. talks about all this different type of stuff yeah, okay. and like why different things changed and like how it's like kind of sad that now there's like basically no box and the box serves no purpose because back in the day without the internet and all this kind of stuff, you had your like your books and stuff in there and your maps and they like actually mattered and yada, yada, yada. So it's actually, it's, it's, it's a surprisingly good, even like he has a video on the, the chicken o meter and like there was so much stuff about games and like the idea of the chicken o meter where this like, uh, the, the, the quality of the picture of this chicken indicated how much health you had. And how that turned into like different forms of modern health bars and all this kind of stuff is super interesting. <clears throat> Anyways, there it, it's, but that's like, <laughs> I mean, you look at the upload schedule, that's really hard content to make. Yeah. It that takes really a tough. crazy amount of research. And what's the oh, whole, actually, that's another really good point is gaming is something that people are really passionate about. It's something that oh, yeah. people would do in their free time, whether they were paid or not. Yeah. And so anytime you work in an industry where somebody else would do it for free, that's what you're up against. You're up against what someone else would do for free with money as no object, right? Like that was, that was a big challenge for us moving into the tech space is the, is tech Coverage. I mean, actually, I think you're probably seeing this more now, now that video production equipment has gotten so accessible and so affordable, is that there are tech channels springing up everywhere that make no sense from a financial standpoint. Like you look at how many videos they upload, you look at their viewership, you can, you can reverse calculate how much revenue they're making and how many hours it takes to do all of this. And you're like, oh, okay, you're making less than minimum wage, right? And that's not a bad thing. People should absolutely, you know, want to try to build something right like they should do a side hustle or you know whatever right like i'm not i'm not criticizing this i'm just saying that whenever you work in an industry where people would do it out of sheer passion you are going to be up against people who are just doing stuff with no sort of thought to the financial sensibility of the approach that they're taking um so gaming is a space that really I think suffers from that if you're trying to put together uh, like a content uh, strategy with, you know, paid professionals who expect vacation time and, you know, regular working hours. Career um, progression, yeah, promotions. Exactly. Cost of living, wage increases. Um, Is it on our end? Okay. Well, please back. Cool. Um, trying to run that up against just like some dude bros hanging out in their basement, like running a gaming podcast, playing video games and running a podcast or something in their free time. Doing it because I think it's entertaining. It's, it's, it's really, it's really, really tough. Um, 
So, you know, I, I wish like, the team luck. Oh. <clears throat> you look at the most desirable career path in North America right now, which is YouTuber. You look at what, like, basically everyone likes doing, which is playing video games. And, like, what, is it every high school not going to have, like, their own aspirational gaming YouTubers? Yeah, pretty much. It, it's going to be everywhere. That Like, when I worked at Best Buy back in the day, my, like, group of friends at Best Buy tried to start a gaming news website. Yeah. And so did, oh, I don't know, everyone else? Like, yep. it was it was crazy uh, back then. A guy I knew at NCIX did, like, some contract work for a friend of his who, uh, I wonder if it's still around. Uh, I think it's called Game Explain? I, I was going to say, I even know what you're talking about, but I, I didn't remember the name. Game Explain. Here, let's see. Let's see if... Ah, oh, hey, look at that. Game Explain totally still exists. And... Does little videos about stuff. We know who developed Super Mario RPG Remake, apparently. So there's that. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Game Explain. Still doing exists. Good? Yeah. Uh, Tom. Uh, Tom from NCIX. When's the game coming out? Oh, Super Mario RPG. Have You've never played it, right? No, 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 no. Not that. Tom's game. Uh, oh, I don't know when Carpoon is coming out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, one of my ex colleagues from NCIX. Whoa, these guys are pumping content oh, oh game my. explain oh yeah. yeah three videos a day carpool chill bro uh we played this at whale land it was actually really fun oh nice yeah developer tom arnold yeah <laughs> love it really this guy <laughs> yep no just kidding not him different nope. no that's him totally different tom arnold so basically you um lines. you harpoon you harpoon cars and you you tow them to the crusher. Uh, there's multiplayer. Um, yeah, it's you can do like time trials. It's fun. Okay, I, I just want to set this straight because at least one person in Flow Plane Chat is is commenting about it. Uh, we're not saying that people shouldn't aspirationally do things. We're saying if you're trying to run one of these things as a as a company, that it's a difficult spot to try to hold because of the amount of people coming for your throat because they want to do it. Yeah. Which is which is fine. It just means you're in a highly competitive space and you're competing against people that are just in often cases happy to not receive a salary because they want to do this out of just passion, which again is fine. It's fine. It just means you have to be really good because you need to be able to give your people career both growth, promotions, all this other type of stuff. Um and make enough money be able to survive. And make enough money to go up against people who might not care about making any money. And make enough money to be able to have a war chest just in case things go poorly, all this other stuff. Like run like a real company. So people might see your content that has, you know, a whole bunch of, let's say hypothetically, that has more sponsorships in it than someone else's. Um, and people might go, well, I'm not going to watch that. It's got sponsorships all over. I'm going to watch this other thing. And it's like, well, right. But they, they'll have them eventually Yeah. <laughs> you know, when, yeah. when they, when they need to take a break to, you know, shower and brush their teeth once in a while. And they're not in just like grind it go, startup go, go, mode, go. right? Like yeah. it, it's, it's a natural evolution. And so, uh, we did it right. Like I'm yeah. not. I'm not saying you shouldn't yeah. try. I, I think people are taking some of the wrong, like some, someone said competition breeds quality. Yeah, we're also not saying that competition is bad. Like it just, we're not saying any of that stuff. Holy sh guys. <laughs> Please. Get it together. I said I like hamburgers. I didn't say I hate hot dogs. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're just saying it's very, it's a very competitive space to be in. That's yes. all. Yes. Not saying it's bad, all that kind of stuff. Clearly, I, I, I mean, I've called out multiple creators already in the show that are all doing great. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just think to bring it all the way back around, like if you're going to come in and buy one of these companies and then ax their editor in chief and then see an exodus of like all the talent. <laughs> Maybe you should have done some due diligence. <laughs> yeah, like that's not gonna work, dude. Escapist is like super dead now. Um, at least their video side. But then the other side looks all dead already. <laughs> yeah, and, and and to be clear, I don't know a lot about like externally evaluating performance of static news websites. But when I see the zero comments on most posts and like less than five on all the ones that do have comments, I get concerned. I saw someone ask like, "Oh, but does it create making it? Do you have to have an account to be able to comment?" 
It's like, does that matter? Like if enough people are frequenting this website, you'd think a handful of them would have accounts. You'd, like I have seen sites, news sites that require an account that have a bunch of comments on it. Like th this is a thing. People will do it. Um, if it's not even worth botting <laughs> the, the comments <laughs> on your site, like yikes. Um, I don't know.